I've really enjoyed this Proverbs series. It's really been a series where we've been able to find the wisdom of God and apply it to our lives. I mean, there is no better book than Proverbs to do that. You know, it really does discuss every single eventuality, every single event that can happen in life is discussed in Proverbs. It can be applied to us to help us live the best life possible. And God is not wanting us um, to be ill-informed. He wants to inform us and help us. I mean, how awesome is God? He wants to do the best for you. And so he's given us the Bible that has got so many different stories, different literatures, like the wisdoms. He's got the Psalms and the songs. And he's got all of these things that are going on, the prophets who speak of his glory and speak of the things to come, that it's all this woven tapestry to help us live life the best that we can do when we follow him, when we trust him. And so do we trust him with the words of Proverbs? Do we go to him for wisdom from his books and actually discover how to live life? Because you can have the agony ant in the newspaper. You can have all of those things, um, your horoscopes, or you can have all of those things, but they're not of God. And they're not looking to seek godly wisdom. They're not looking to help you. They're just looking to get a quick book. They're just looking to um, manipulate you. They're looking to sort of like for their own gain. But everywhere in the word of God, it's a story of love for you. It's a story that we are part of, that we get to be part of the story of God that brings new life to the world, that are bearers of the good news of Jesus. And so Proverbs is such a wonderful book. And I want to encourage you, like I did last time, there's 31 chapters in Proverbs. There's 30 to 31 days in a month. I'd, you know, if you're not reading anything else right now, then start off your day in Proverbs. Just read a whole chapter and just highlight as you go through each day, which is the one that jumps off. Like as you pray, like you start off as you read your scriptures and say, Holy Spirit, come and speak to me. And then just scribble down and just highlight the ones that just affect you. The ones that sort of like leap out and leap in your heart. And as you do so, then meditate on it. Say, okay, God, what are you saying through this verse? What are you trying to teach me about my life and how I should live? And just allow him to just change and transform your day. I am sure, I can guarantee that as you do that consecutively over the days, you will find that those proverbs will start to come into your conversation. They'll start picking up and people will start speaking of the things that you're reading about. And you'll be able to speak wisdom, life and truth into people's lives. So this Proverbs series has been incredible. And I encourage you to go back on YouTube on, on the podcast and just catch up on all the things that has been said over these past few weeks. But this week, um, I wanted to choose a theme that runs throughout the book of Proverbs, and it's to do with our talking. We talk a lot, don't we? You know, the study's been done, lots of studies have happened and things that have like, you know, given people and, you know, um, gender, uh, you know, a specific gender a bad name. You know, there was one study that was done that 21,000 words were spoken by a lady um, on average and then by a male, it was 7,000 words. And oh my word, we can't get our words in edgeways. And, and so other studies have been done and that's really, you know, extreme. But the study that I found um, that was done by Matthias, Dr. Matthias, he discovered that on average in 2007, a woman spoke 16,215 words a day. That sounds a lot of words. But we're not far behind. Us men, we speak 15,669 words. And so out of all of those words that we utter to lots of different people, to lots of different situations and scenarios, the Bible says something about that. It says something about our language and our speech. And in Proverbs 18, 21, it says this. It says, the tongue has the power of life and death. Those who love it will eat its fruit. The tongue has the power of life and death. Wow. So the tongue, so your instrument to speak and communicate to the world has within it the power to bring life or to bring death. And those who love it will eat of its fruit. Now, it doesn't say it will, we will only eat of the good fruit. We will only eat of life. We could also actually eat of death. So when we spew out words and when we speak words over our family, over our friends, over our colleagues, you know, whoever we meet, that, you know, raging time when you're in the car and someone's just cut you up and you're giving them lip and you're just shouting at them, we bear fruit in all of those situations. We eat the fruit 
of the life or death that we give through our tongue. Now that should make you stop. That should make you want to hold your mouth and not speak words of death. It should really help you to stop just uttering words for uttering words sake. And Proverbs speaks about that as well. It says that even a fool, even a fool can sound wise if he doesn't say anything. I mean, this book cuts to the heart of every situation. But I want to talk this morning about us speaking life into every situation. We're in COVID, we're in lockdown, we're in um, a situation that we've never been in before. And so we've got the opportunity as Christ followers to follow the life-giving word of God and actually bring life to people that we meet. Because I'm sure that we're short of a bit of life in our situations. I'm sure that there's people who you meet who are short of a bit of life and who need that word spoken over them that is going to cause them to bring life, that's cause, going to cause fruit to bear of life in their life. And so I encourage you, from what we're going to talk about, to have that in your mind. Your tongue has the power of life and death. So the next time you open your mouth, power of life and death. And so we have so many different metaphors of talking, don't we? We say that words are cheap. You know, if someone's not willing to do the action, then words are cheap. Uh, words can be binding. We say things and people bind us up. We declare things. You know, to bind something, or maybe to make a covenant with someone, we make a covenant with our husbands and wives. I declared something on my wedding day with my mouth. I made an oral declaration that I would love my wife to the end that no one else would come between us and that it would be me and her till death do us part. And so we declare with our mouths, we bring, we make binding declarations. We also have anger in our mouth and we have hurtful and spiteful words. We have joy and we speak encouragement and we speak love with our mouth. There's so many different ways that we use our words and language is such a wonderful way of expressing it. And language has just been all the way from the beginning. We've never had a day when we were the Nathandra Halls and we couldn't speak and we grunted. I mean, what a ridiculous picture. We had a God who created us and who spoke things into being. He spoke the very life that we live. He used the word and the word was with God. He used Jesus Christ as the mouthpiece to speak the whole of creation into being. If words are not important to God, then... I mean, we, then we're saying God is a liar. Words are so important to God that even Jesus Christ himself is called the word of God. So right at the beginning, you have God declaring Jesus, declaring the words out of his mouth that's bringing light and bringing life and bringing human beings into being. And so these are the power of our words. And some of the things that are downsides that Proverbs talks is, the words of the reckless pierce like swords. The words of the reckless pierce like swords. I don't know about you, but for me, when I was younger and I was growing up in high school, I had so many words spoken over me. I had so many declarations of hurtful and spiteful things that wanted to make me feel this small. Now, I was on the outside quite a popular kid. I was, you know, people liked me and people liked being with me, but on the inside, because of a handful of people who were in my tutor group, who were in most of my lessons, they spoke so much death over me. It was like a cloud. I felt like a cloud just covered me. And wherever I walked, whatever I did, I allowed their words to hit me. I ate from their fruits and I ate the, the poison that they were, they were drinking. And I would repeat their words and I would speak it over myself. And the power of those words really you know, did something deep within my heart that for, for many years after that, even to college, even to into my mid-twenties, there was things and roots that allowed, I had allowed to establish in my heart that was causing death and destruction. Now, I don't, I, I, I know, and I'm sort of like prudent enough to know that most of us who are listening today, most of us who are um, just listening in and hearing what God is saying, has been in that situation, have had hurtful words spoken over them. And I just want to tell you that that's not the end of your story, that that is not who God thinks you are. That is not what God wants to speak over you. 
Now I know he needs to do a work in you. And I know that those healing power needs to come upon you. And the darts that have been allowed to attach to your heart, that allow that feed you with poison each and every day, we need to pick them out. Because unfortunately, the condition of our heart, the Bible says that from the overflow of our heart, the mouth speaks. So the, the saying also is true that from hurting people, we hurt people. You know, we speak from the pain that we're going through. We speak from the hurt and the anguish. And when we see someone joyful, when we see someone who's having a great time, who looks like they're doing life better than us, looks like they're enjoying life better than us, then we get angry, we get frustrated. And it's all because of the pain inside. It's all of the anger speaking and the hurt speaking. And then from that, we speak. And so we need to address those words. And so we need to listen to the words of God. And we need to start declaring over us the truth that God wants to speak to us about. Because his word, Jesus, wants to declare some things over you. So the God of life wants to speak words of life over you. And he wants those to be your truth. He wants those to be the, the words that we listen to, the words that we repeat, the words that we speak over ourselves. So a way of taking out those darts is a way of remembering that situation and remembering those words, but saying, I no longer believe the lie. I no longer believe the lie that I am worthless. I no longer believe the lie that I am worthless. I accept the truth that God says that he loves me and that I find worth in him. And as we say those words, even as I've seen them then, I could just feel my spirit lifting because I've had those words spoken over me. I've edited that fruit and it's called me worthless. But I know that my worth is no longer in people's words. It's no longer in what people have to say about me or the, the comments that I find. But it's in God. It's in Christ Jesus where I find my worth. And God, through his action, God, through his love, actually sent Jesus Christ to die for us and said, you're worth this much. So let us remove those things. Let us clean up our hearts. Let us declare. So I, I want you to have this as a, a thing that you say each and every time those lies come to your mind. Just say, I, I reject the lie. I rebuke the lie that, fill in the gap, has spoken over me. I choose to accept the truth about what God has said and then repeat and then find a verse that says it about you. Look at Psalm 139 if you're struggling with your identity and what God says about you. These are the words that we need to take on board. These are the words that speak life over us. And so, so words are so important. Words are so important. So as you deal with the words that have been spoken over you, if you allow your heart to become free and to become um, a reflection of the identity that God called you to be, not the person who people have formed you to be, not the ones that have been spoken over you, but you become the person and you eat of the fruit of the word that God speaks over you, then when you start to speak, you start to speak prudent words. You start to speak wise words. You know, you start to speak healing words. The Bible says this in Proverbs 12, 18, the words of the reckless pierce like swords, which I've said at the start, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. The tongue of the wise brings healing. Where does God want to use you to bring healing? Where does God want you to speak your words, his words through you to bring healing to someone's hurt and hurt someone's pain? Proverbs 16, 24, gracious words are like honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. I bet there's some people in your life who need to have healing to their bones, who feel so weary and tired with life. And they just need some gracious words spoken over them. It's just like honey to their bones. You can be that mouthpiece. You can go and speak those words. Proverbs 21, 23 says, Those who guard their mouths and, keep, and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. I want to tell you that as you walk through in life, the words that you say, if you guard your mouth 
and you don't speak rashly or you don't speak harshly or you don't just do what the first thing that comes into your mind says. It's going to keep you from calamity. It's going to keep you from falling into pits. It's going to keep you from maybe a destructive blow or a destructive downturn. It's going to keep you from calamity. So let's be wise with our words. Let's heal our hearts. Let's allow God to do a work, God to speak his words over us. And then as we speak, let us speak words of wholeness and words of truth, words that bring relief to others. The final one, Proverbs 21, 6 says, A fortune made by a lying tongue is a fleeting vapor and a deadly snare. You need to know that if you're in a position where of influence and of significance, and you're lying and you're getting to the top because of your lies, then ultimately it's going to be a fleeting vapor and a deadly snare. This is Proverbs. This is the words that God wants to give us so that we do the right thing and not the worldly thing. We're not here to get to the top by any means possible. We're not here to lie and cheat and say any kind of utterance so that other people will like us and other people will get us and other people will support us. Leave that to the politicians. We're children of God. We're children of him. And so what comes out of our mouths should bring healing to people's bones. What comes out of our mouths should be sweet to the soul. Let us be life givers in the way that we go about our words, in the what we speak about, because you've got the power of life and death. You've experienced death from so many people, I can guarantee. And unfortunately, we've been people who've given death to others. But from this point on, let's make a choice. Let's make a declaration that no more. I'm going to be prudent in my words. I'm going to allow God to speak his words over me. So I am secure. I am um, at ease. I am healed from the pains of my past. Then I may speak life and I may speak love to those who I meet. Because right now, in COVID-19, there hasn't been a better time to speak words of encouragement, speak words of life. Let us not get caught up in the fanfare of what everybody else is speaking. Let us speak life right now. So that's my challenge to you this morning. That's the word of God right to you. And let us choose our words carefully because you will eat of its fruit. Let me pray as we finish. So Heavenly Father, I just thank you. Um, for your truth and for your words, how you want to nurture us, how you want to shape us and form us. And that through our many words that we speak a day, Lord, I pray that more and more each and every day we'll be speaking words of life, words of encouragement, words of truth for those that are listening. That maybe for those people will be healing and wholeness and honey on our soul, that we may lift one another up. Um, in this time of desperation and need. So bless them right now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.